The Reality of the Gospel World Outreach Ministries presents the Voice of Deliverance broadcast, featuring the explosive preaching, bold teaching, and the powerful prayer of deliverance of Heaven's Ambassador, Leonard Ford. Brother Ford is a minister that does what others don't, and he has a ministry that goes where others won't. He and his wife, Jesse travel across America and around the world, preaching hope and bringing deliverance. Whether they are in the church, under the gospel tent, or on the mission field, they boldly declare that if you continue in the word, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now I present to you, Brother Ford. God bless your viewers. Listen, this is Prophet Ford. I want to invite you to a camp meeting like no other. Go ahead and mark the dates, August the 3rd through the 7th. That's right, 2020, this year, August 3rd through the 7th, 10.30 a.m., 7 p.m., right here at 9101 Lou Drive. It's going to be a camp meeting like no other. This is the first time that I've invited each speaker to do both services. That's right. Each speaker is going to speak the morning and the night, and we're believing God to show up and show himself strong on our behalf. We're bringing in Apostle Brenda Jefferson. She's going to kick us off Monday the 3rd at 1030 that morning and then 7 that night. And then on Tuesday night, we're going to have Apostle Marcus Stevenson Jr. He's going to be here both services. I'm here to announce to you I don't care who said it, when it was said, nor how it was said, but I'm here to tell you that he's a God of all your body, God of all your mind, and God of all your soul. And that's the benefit of God. You can do some things for you, but you can't do everything for you. If you can do it all, why do you need God? I need God because he gives me benefits. Are you listening to me? So he said, even the God of our salvation... Look to somebody and say, that same God can do it all for you. It takes me a few minutes to warm up. I'm almost done preaching. I want to go to Psalms 116. No, I don't. I want to go to Psalms 103. Watch this. While you flipping there, just, just announce to the devil, I got some benefits. If some of you right now, I don't care whether you was well off, I don't care if you was wealthy, and sure enough, if you was broke. And then uh, the power of God is going to accompany uh, one of my spiritual sons from is coming from Texas, Brother Chris McRae, powerful young man, and right at his mid forties. Romans eight uh, seventeen says that I'm a child of God and I'm a joint heir with Christ. Romans eight eleven says that I that the Spirit of God that lives on the inside of me, and the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in me, then He quickens my mortal body. Then I, I can tell you that Deuteronomy chapter twenty eight thirteen says that I'm the head and not the tail above only and not beneath. And Psalms one thirty nine fourteen says that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. And if Ephesians 1 6 says that I'm accepted in the beloved and Ephesians 1 1 says that I'm a saint and no longer a sinner and I can tell you that 2 Corinthians 8 17 says that I'm a new creation and all things are, are made new the old things are passed away and all things have become new and I can tell you that Romans 8 37 says that I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus who is my Lord 1 Peter 2 9 says that we are a chosen generation a holy nation that we're a royal priesthood and that you are a peculiar people. And then on Thursday, I'm going to have Prophet Willie Edwards from the International House of Praise to come and do both services. Jesus, glory to God. That's something that the saints is failing to do now. We don't want to get up early no more. We don't want to do what it takes. Hallelujah. To get the job done. Hallelujah. And glory to God. It's not going to take us going back to getting up early. Hallelujah. People, you used to get up early in the morning and pray. We used to get up early in the morning and fast. Amen. Glory to God. And seek the face of God. But we done got beside ourselves now. Hallelujah. We think we got it going on. We think we done made it. We think we done arrived. But I bought your news this evening. Amen. Glory to God. We got to get back to, hallelujah, what we used to do. Amen. When we was getting results. Glory to the Lamb of God. We done backslid and don't even know we done backslid. Come on. But I'm telling you today, glory to God, that we got to get back to doing what we used to do. We got to get up praying. We got to get up we got to get up calling on the name of the Lord because people lie to and stay glory to God. And we got to give God the praise in this place. Hallelujah. And as always, 
I'll be the anchor man on Friday, amen, that morning and that night. So make plans now. Call a neighbor, call a friend, do whatever you got to do, adjust your schedule. But I'm telling you, this will be a camp meeting like no other. Normally, we I don't carry a theme. I have a theme in my heart, but I don't really put it out there because I want the speakers to be able to flow. But this year, our theme is going to be this gospel of the kingdom must be preached. We're in that time. The gospel of the kingdom has got to be preached. You don't want to miss a service. You don't want to miss a moment. Get here early enough to get in the opening prayer. And the presence and the power of God is going to make a difference in this camp meeting. Remember, August 3rd through the 7th, 9101 Lou Drive, Little Rock, Arkansas, 1030 a.m., 7 p.m. A camp meeting like no other. This gospel of the kingdom must be uh, preached. We did some of those things because the world is wilder than we are in that generation. But what happened, we incorporated that thing and made it the standard, made it the norm. But baby, it's time to walk in the Holy Ghost in every aspect of your life. If you will start pastoring in the spirit, watch this. Holy Ghost gifts to keep the church clean. See, I know, I know, I know we, we like the gift to see cars. We like a proper day to see cars, houses, and wardrobes. Woo, and don't let them come through and see some money. Oh my God, that's a man of God. But when the booger come to town and walk to the platform and say, there's three couples in here wife swapping. And look, y'all ain't even swapping. He's like, oh Jesus. <laughs> yeah, the man of God said, he's sitting on the platform and God said, there's three couples in here uh, that's swapping. He said, what they got to do with me? He said, you the prophet of the house. He said, no, he the pastor. He said, but you the guest speaker. And when he turned over to you, now you the prophet of the house. And I want you to deal with it. He said, God, this is the first night. Tell the pastor to do it. He said, I've been talking to the pastor. He won't deal with it. He said, I need you to deal with it. And he said, okay. So he got up. Walked to, now, you know you're supposed to walk out. And this, this is the first thing. Do your preliminaries and all that. He walked to the platform. And he said, there's three couples in here that's shacking. I mean, they're, they're swapping. Y'all been swapping. And, and so God wants you to come to the altar now. You know ain't nobody moving, right? Ain't nobody finna get up for that. that car. So watch this. He, he Now I just use these two brothers that's here. He had two brothers with him. So he said, Brother Mansell, you go down that aisle. Brother Joel, you go down that aisle. And I'll take the middle aisle. What do you think Mansell and Joel are thinking? And God ain't told me that you did. But you know what they did? Both of them started praying in the Holy Ghost. My man said, get up, go down this aisle, went straight to the perfect couple. This is me. They started crying. Joel, go down here, go straight to the couple. Now I got to go find the, the master. I go down the aisle praying, get right to the booger. I said, it's you. It ain't me, preacher. You missed it. No, I ain't missing it. Yeah, preacher, you done missed it. No, I'm not. God said it's you. His wife done dropped her head. No, no man of God. I ain't. He said, listen, I ain't missing it. And God been dealing with you. But then he started crying. Yeah, it's me. Come on to the altar. See, right there, you're like, oh, Jesus, I don't want to be on no prophet like that. That's what's wrong with the church. That's why the church is filthy. That's how the church got dirty, because we don't see nothing but good things. But I came to tell you, a healthy church is a clean church, and a clean church is going to be clean by the Spirit, not by somebody's attitude. See, you can't fake state. That's got to be the real deal. And what I'm trying to tell you, you got to understand, that's where we're going. Why would you be afraid if you live in clean? Go ahead and get your house in order. Go ahead and sanctify yourself. Go ahead and get in position. See, you want God to use you. Like Sister Barnes said, uh, whatever you do, don't do it without me. God said, well, get rid of the trash. Lord, can't you use me in spite of? Mm, how did I get on that? I don't know, but I'm there now. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the what? Hidden wisdom. Which, who ordained? God ordained. Watch it. Before the world under what? It's for us, saints. He ordained this thing for our glory. See, your real glory is not what folks are saying about you. It's when you walk in the spirit, preaching hope and bringing deliverance, setting the captives free. When you open in the blind eyes, unstopping the deaf ears. Hallelujah. Calling the lame to walk and leave us a heart. When people's minds are being renewed, lives are being changed. My wife and I were the interim pastors in the church and we talked for three months. Hallelujah. On relationships and on matters. Marriages. And at the end of it, a man walked up to me and said, son, you don't know what you did the last three months. I said, yes, I do. I thought on, a, on family because I said if I ever pastor a church at least three months out of the year, I'm going to teach on family relationships. I said, since we had this opportunity, I began to do it. He said, yeah, but and he showed me this couple. They always came together arm in arm, looked like lovebirds. He said they were at the verge of a divorce. He said they come to church looking like honeymooners. He said, but they was getting ready to sell the house. They was getting ready to leave town. 
out. They was leaving each other. He said, because of your teaching for the last 90 days, they have made a recommitment to one another. They've drawn in. What am I trying to tell you? You got to learn. Stop just saying what you want to say. Stop being an echo. Amen. Get in the face of God. What is God telling you to say? Folks are hurting. Folks are messed up. Folks' lives are being infiltrated by the powers of darkness. Lying thoughts are going through their mind and they need a voice in this hour. The voice of God to stand strong and stand bold and be clear. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Which none of the princes of this world knew. Did you see that? We speak wisdom. No demon knows. That includes Satan. None of the princes, that's his hierarchy. None of his, what you want to call his big boys. They don't know what we know if we pray in the Holy Ghost. And they don't know what we're praying. We're praying a wisdom they didn't know it and they don't know it now. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But because they didn't know, they played right into God's hand. Hallelujah. But as it is written, here it is. I have not seen it. If EYE has not seen it, how can the person tell you about it? But I came to tell you just because EYE has not seen it does not mean you cannot attain it. Why? Because he has given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. You got to understand God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Where? In heavenly places. Where? In Christ Jesus. We are sitting in heavenly places. Where? In Christ Jesus. If we understand our position, realize where we are, and pray more in the Holy Ghost, all of a sudden the kingdom that's on the inside of us is going to begin to be released through us, and we're going to begin to walk in kingdom wisdom, kingdom excellence, kingdom power, kingdom intellect. We in a time now, watch this. I have not seen nor ear heard. The book of heaven seen it and he haven't heard it. He can't teach it to you. But look at you with your anointed self. You praying in the Holy Ghost. You haven't seen it with these eyes. You haven't heard it with these ears. But there's something God gives calling utterance. And you walk to the platform and your mind didn't know but this much. But out of your belly came rivers of living water and it began to flow. And all of a sudden deliverance start taking place all over the place and you sitting there knowing this is God and it's marvelous in my eyes. Oh, I came to tell you this is God's hour. This is God's time. This is God's day. Will you be God's vessel? Can God trust you? Can God tap you and you just yield to the Holy Ghost? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We're going to be victorious in this hour by the Spirit and the Holy who pray more in the Holy Ghost than you ever have? Sometimes I be, my wife and I go to bed and I be over there and praise the Lord. We both done dozed off praying in the Holy Ghost. I get up and go to the bathroom or something. I come back. She wake up. Hallelujah. Praying in the Holy Ghost. That's what I'm talking about. Don't just, don't just talk about it. She, the girl, I know she sleep. Next thing I know she praying in tongues. Why? Because your spirit is engaged. That's better than waking up cussing. Come on. <laughs> See, when you do this, you don't have nightmares. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Neither have entered into the heart of man. I haven't seen it. You haven't heard it. They ain't even imagined this thing. Which God have done what? prepared, prepared for them that love him. I told you this year is supposed to be a year of intimacy. And notice it didn't say them that he loved. He said those that love him. And as we begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, that's why Paul said, I want to know him. I want to be closer to him than I ever have been. It's time for us to get so close to God we can take his vital signs. Come on here. You want to take his pulse because you're right there like John. Your head's in his chest. You're walking with him in a level. Come on here. For what man knoweth the things of a man? Look what the Bible says in verse 10. But God hath revealed them unto us. How? By his spirit. Capital S. Talking about the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost searched all things, yea, the deep things of God. Didn't, run, didn't Deuteronomy 29, 29 say the secret thing belong to God. Watch this. But the things that are revealed belong to us and our children. You can get a revelation that will shape the next generation just by walking with God and praying in the Holy Ghost. And the Bible said, hmm, 
Mm, thank you, Jesus. God has revealed him on earth by his spirit. For the spirit search of all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man know the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him? Oh, that's a small s. Talking about your recreated human spirit. Ah, even so the things of God know of no man but the Holy Ghost. The spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. When you got born again, you got a new nature and your inner man is of God. All things are passed away. All things are passed away. All things become new. All things are of God. You were unrighteous. Now you are righteous by nature. And when you get a revelation of your righteousness, here's what I found out. The Romans 117 says, for righteousness is revealed from faith to faith. The more you stay in the word, the more you understand of the word, your faith comes up and God said, let me show you what you already got that you didn't know you could walk in because you're right with me. And then you get to that place and you're happy, but you stay in the word and your faith comes to another level. God said, this is something else that's already yours that you didn't know you had. Let me show you this. See, righteousness is what revealed, uncovered, made known to you from one level of faith to the next. That's why the devil robs you of your word time. You got time for everything but the word. And I'm going to tell you how he how he do some, some solid things. He know you ain't going to go do the other freaky stuff, so he make you sing all day. Ain't no word in there. Come on, you <laughs> you singing all day. You get in the car. You got the music on. You go Everywhere you go, you got your headset and I'm going music. I was talking to a guy, and he was telling me about how he was renewing his mind with music. I said, no, you're not. I said, you might be changing, changing your playlist. <laughs> you ain't renewing your mind with music. Your mind is renewed by the washing of the water of the word. You renew your mind by the word of God. And I found this out. When you really renew your mind, some songs you don't sing no more. And I'm not talking about boogie songs. I'm not talking about rhythm and blues. Listen, I was on a 21-day fast. And I was 14 days into the fast. I asked my wife if I could go to my friend's cabin and spend the last seven days down there just by myself. Just took two gallons of water and my Bible and score. I've been reading the Bible on cassette, and I went down and I had my favorite uh, music. Uh, it was a cassette at the time. In the, I mean, I was jamming all the way to Perryville. That 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 tape had me rocking. I left it in the car. I got in God's face seven days and seven nights. Didn't have to come out for nothing. Didn't have to take a bath every day if I didn't want to because it was just me in there. So I was able just to go in, go deep into the presence of God without breaking that flow, praying in the Holy Ghost two, three, four, five hours a day, reading the word, meditating, letting Scorpio read the word. And when I got through, I came out of that place. God had gave me instructions. I had stuff written down to tell my wife when I get back to her and from, from where I was at to the road was three miles. Um, a mile and a half, because you know, as soon as I turned the car on, the cassette came on. A mile and a half up the road, I pulled to the side and looked at the radio like, what's, what's this playing? I hit the eject button, and it was my favorite tape. I said, Lord, talk to me. He said, son, you've been in your soul all this time. You just transitioned to the spirit, and now your spirit knows this is trash. I said, oh, my God, if I've been in my soul, how many thousands of others are in the soul thinking they flowing? You got to understand. See, we got to break this flesh. You're talking about behind the veil. No, the veil of the flesh is the only veil you behind because Jesus ripped the other one. If you got a veil, it's your flesh or your mind. Come on here. You got to bring. So when I found out when you step into the realm of the spirit and you get that flesh crucified and get that soul under control, you find out what you used to enjoy listening to, you can't listen to no more. Then that makes you a misfit because most of the church is still enjoying that and you sitting there looking. <laughs> I was, I was in North Carolina preaching and they saw trouble in my way three nights in a row. <laughs> three different choirs. And I'm sitting there saying, Lord, I can't take another night of this. Fourth night, choir get up, the same, and this, this is the sermonic song. Right before I preach. Trouble in my way. Y'all know I lost it, don't you? I got up and busted up so bad I ain't been invited back since. I just... <laughs> They was rocking with it though, man. They had that shoot, everything in there was moving. And I'm like, shut up. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Watch this, watch this. Verse 12. Now we have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know what? The things that are what? Freely, 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 what? 
given to us huh, of God. We begging and crying and pleading and snotting. And God said, it's you. What you doing? Wake up. We don't understand our righteousness has already given us this. But our faith got to come so we can believe and receive and be walking. We believe in for something that's already out. We already in air. Come on here. We in air with Jesus. A joint air with Christ. Everything the Father got belongs to us. We like the other brother. You ain't never gave me a candy to son. What you talking about? First of all, the boy was dumb because before his other brother left, he gave him his stuff because he was the oldest brother. So he had it. He given him that. He said, everything I got is yours. You could have you took a cab and tell him, wouldn't you? But you waiting on me to come give you one. That's how we do God. I said, what? I healed, you, I healed you at the cross. You waiting on me to come bring you healing? See how quiet you got? Okay. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but what? In the words of the Holy Ghost, the which the Holy Ghost teacheth what? Comparing spiritual things to spiritual things. Well, what words is the Holy Ghost teaching? He's teaching tongues, baby. See, your mind don't get it. When you pray in the Holy Ghost long enough and put a demand on the Spirit, he'll bring the revelation into your mind. That's why he said when you pray in tongues, pray that you may interpret. He ain't talking about the gift of interpretation. That works separately as the Spirit wills. But when you are praying things, and praying through situations, all of a sudden things begin to happen. Things begin to manifest. Why? Because I done prayed it out in the Holy Ghost. I done pushed this thing through and the devil couldn't stop it because he didn't know what I was praying. And that's the beauty of praying in the Holy Ghost. You don't either, so you can't mess it up. But, look at this here. The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Why? For they are foolishness on them. And you know it is so dumb to the saints for you to go pray in tongues. What? We're going to pray in tongues for an hour. You're walking down the floor. What did you say? I wasn't talking to you. The God I was talking to that's going to answer the prayer, you know just what I said, and it's already done. So you can get over yourself. But religious folks is running into themselves every day because they don't understand the thing of the Spirit. And settle yourself and realize you can't teach them. They cannot understand this until they stop being carnal-minded. So when they get like this, say, baby, read your Bible. If you're going to text them something, text them a scripture. It's foolishness under him because they are what? Spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual, what? Judge of all things. Yet he himself is judge of no man. You know why? He's already judged himself. For he who hath known the mind of Christ, for who have known the mind of Christ, that he may instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ. We who? We that pray in tongues enough to get it. We pray in the Holy Ghost enough. Revelation begin to flow, and we take on the very mind of Christ. Number two, ah, exercise and authority. I really was going to that longer than I thought I was going to be, but that's all right. Y'all need it. Exercise and authority is the second key to victory in this hour. And G, verse Matthew 28. See, we're in time now when saints talk about stuff and don't talk to stuff. I heard more folks talking about corona than to it. I'm talking about the saints at the most. I don't fool the other folks. I'm talking about the church folks, the preacher people. I ain't never seen so much fear in the church as I have in these last 90 days. And I was telling the man of God today, I said, what bothers me is because my camp is the faith camp. I said, y'all been preaching faith for the last 20 years and you ran here? Did you believe what you preached? Because if it's on the head, it's on the body. I was talking to the man of God uh, Saturday. He told me in his city, Brother Irison, he, he said, I'm the only church open. He said, we're doing better than that than we did when it wasn't because everybody coming to my church because they ain't got nowhere else to go. He said, some of the pastors told him, we're not going to open back up when this is over. I said, well, why don't you just tell your people that? Won't you just tell your folks you, you just you, you close? No, nah, because they're still getting their money. They're still getting their electronic deposit. They ain't going to tell them. But watch, watch what happens. When it break up and the folks stay in his church and don't go back, he's going to be labeled a sheep thief. He ain't stole no sheep. He just kept, he just kept the store open. He, he, he could eat. Because he said, people said, man, what? You, didn't, you, you, you stayed open. He said, yeah, I stayed open. What do you mean? He said, oh, wait, I'm closed. The police going to have to come stand at the door and tell me I can't come in here. He said, but other than that, I'm staying open. And because he stayed open, people are coming. Now, why? Folks are tired of sitting at the house looking at a little square. They are. I mean, really. It was okay for a minute. But see, long term, folks get claustrophobia. I got to get out of this house. <laughs> 
Anyway, anyway, Jesus, verse 28, chapter 28, verse 18, Matthew 28, 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore, that word power there is exousia, which is authority. Go ye therefore in all, into, and teach all nations, all ethnic groups, all nationalities, baptizing them in or into the name, the fullness, the authority of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. What that means authority should be perpetuated to every generation of believer because Jesus told the first group to teach the folk what I taught you. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out them. Why is it? That's the first sign preached and the one we never hear taught. The second one is praying in tongues and that's the most folk one in our I mean a few of them will pray for the sick. They don't believe nothing, Lord. If it's your will, heal them. If not, let them go to heaven. I mean, they. But casting out demons and tongues, the first two, they don't know. Luke 9, Luke 9, Luke 9, Luke 9. No, I'm trying to tell you. Three keys to walking in victory, to walking in conquest. How are we going to have conquest and we don't even want to challenge? John Lake used to go to the witches, uh, uh, what you call that thing? When they had, I thought I said the witch haven. What? When they, when they have their uh, annual meeting, here we go. Listen, beloved, I want to give you an opportunity to show into our ministry. We've been coming into your homes month after month, amen, preaching the gospel. And I want you, amen, to sow a seed. Take the time to talk to God, and he will tell you exactly what to sow. Make your check payable to the reality of the gospel or just ROG Ministries. Send it to the P.O. Box on the screen. P.O. Box 164091, Little Rock, Arkansas. Or you can cash app it at dollar sign, reality of the gospel one. Amen. But sow to help perpetuate this gospel, to keep us going into other homes, other nations. 15 other countries can now hear this gospel. Tell your friends, we're on Roku. Amen right here from VTN and I want you to know you can help us preach hope and bring deliverance to multitudes millions are able to view us every week amen so we want you to be a part of it because when you sow you become a partaker and I believe that the spirit of God will honor your seed with a harvest I don't have to give you some bogus promise the Bible said when you give for the gospel he's going to give you a hundredfold return now in this time but also there are anointings and graces that are released in your life and in your affairs. So put yourself in a position for God to bless you. Sow a seed and watch God send you a harvest in Jesus' name. Remember, Jesus will pull you through if you can stand the pull. God bless you. have been encouraged through the uncompromising message that you heard today. If you would like to have this message in its entirety, send $8 for compact disc or $20 for video to the Reality of the Gospel Ministries Incorporated, P.O. Box 1640-91, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72216. If you would like to become a partner with this ministry, you may do so by joining the Ally 200 Club at $25 a month, or you may become a Truth Ally for $10 or more each month. Send your offerings to the Reality of the Gospel Ministries Incorporated, P.O. Box 164091, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72216. If you continue in God's word, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free.